This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we grade some color and see if it passes. Wow. Yeah. Shame. No, you're the smartest man alive. No, my kind sir. It's all you. You are brilliant. Well, if I'm brilliant, you are an intellectual god. Well, you have the brains and the looks. And you have the beard. You're just the best, man. When I get married, you will be my best man. All right, I'll take that. What's with the linguistic makeout session? Can a guy just appreciate another dude? We are celebrating. I'd label it verbal intercourse, actually. Celebrating because Josh's brilliant idea. Get out of here, it was all you! What about us both of us? Teamwork. Yeah. Wow. What are you celebrating? No more Emily. She's gone. We get to sleep safely again. Yeah. What do you mean gone? We tricked her into moving back to Florida. <laughs> How? It was easy. Ah, we just got here. Gone, baby, gone. Gone in 60 seconds. Gone fishing. Gone with the wind. The gone father. <laughs> gone. So what happens when she gets to Florida and realizes we're not there? What? What do you mean? Well, clearly we're not in Florida, so when she gets there and realizes that, isn't she just going to be pissed? But uh, good luck with that. That was a terrible idea. What are you talking about? It was your idea! Why did you suggest that to me? Logo. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques to go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and last week we cracked out some color correction. And as promised, today we're going to talk about some basics of color grading. Now, if you didn't see last week's episode, give that a watch before proceeding here. But for the rest of us, let's proceed. <laughs> I see grading as the creative portion of correcting your image. The initial color correction is more of a technical process of balancing and matching. And now with that done, you're going to move into grading, which is where you set the tone of your image. How do you want the film to feel? And your grading is going to have a big part to play in that. Obviously, you should know what the look of your film is going to be or what you want it to be before you shoot so you can light it accordingly. I do not believe in the whole fix it in post mentality. There are very few things that can actually be fixed in post. So your thinking should not be, we will fix it in post. Your thinking should be more like, we will perfect it in post. But let's get into the shot that we're gonna do, which is this one right here. Pretty basic shot, nothing crazy about it, and all available lighting. Also, you can see here that we're in After Effects. I had a lot of people asking me to grade right in After Effects instead of using a third-party plugin. So, uh, here we go. Now, you should be able to do whatever I do here in any editor, and usually, I wouldn't grade here, but we will get into other ways to grade incoming episodes. So again, here's our shot, completely uncolor corrected or graded. So the first thing I'm going to do is my primary correction, or as we have been calling it, color correction. Now usually I would do this with curves, some saturation, maybe levels, but since we're getting a little more creative and I do want to sharpen this image up, I'm going to show you something a bit different. First, I'm gonna create an adjustment layer. I'll be creating several of these to keep my effects separate. Now, I'll click on the adjustment layer and add unsharpened mask to it. Then, I'll set the amount to about 19 and then spread out the radius to about 166. Then, I'll add a second instance of unsharpened mask, set it to about 39, and then, again, the radius to about eight. So now, we can see as I toggle this on and off that we've gotten rid of that foggy look that the clip originally had and added some contrast. That's because unsharpened mask is basically adding contrast to the lines within the image, which causes the picture to appear more sharp. To that same adjustment layer, I will now add sharpening, which I will set to about 15, just to get my image where I want sharpening 
wise. Now I'm going for a bit of a harsh look and this sharpening will help with that. Now I'll create another adjustment layer which I will use for the bulk of my color grading. First thing I'm going to do is add gamma pedestal gain. You have a few options here. The first black stretch which will soften up your shadows which I will do just a bit. Then you have red, green, and blue each with the gamma pedestal and gain. I used this one first because it basically is the easiest way to explain what pretty much all the tools I'm going to use do. The gamma is the shadow area, so by adjusting it for any individual color, you are affecting the shadow area with that specific color. The pedestal is the midtones of your image, so that is the overall tone, and the gain affects the highlights. So I'll add just a bit of red into the shadows and the highlights, then I'll add a bit of yellow into the highlights by pulling the blue gain down a bit. Now I'll drop in curves into this adjustment layer. This works just like the other one I showed you, but it's more precise. First you will have the RGB curve, which you can now start adding contrast by clicking and adjusting your curve. Up at the top you have the highlights of your image, the middle you have the midtone, and the bottom are the shadows. By moving each area up, you are lightening that respective tone, and by going down, you are darkening. Of course, you have different values in between, which is why this offers a lot more control. So, you could add a lot of contrast by pulling the shadows down here and the highlights up here. You can also mess with the mids uh, to add some other interesting effects. But for now, I just want to take down the highlights a bit and lighten the shadows just a bit. But now we can come up here and switch over to red, blue, or green to dial in colors that we want to use within curves. And this works exactly like Gamma Pedestal Gain. Now here I'm going to add some red into the highs, and then I will take down some of the blues in the highlights to get again a little bit more yellow. Next I'm gonna add levels. Levels is a lot like curves but less precise since you only have this bar for your corrections but I really love using levels to add contrast so right here is the level for the shadows which I will bring this in to darken them up. Over here are the highlights and if I pull that in it will lighten the highlights but now down here this will do the exact opposite of the above. If I adjust this side it will lighten up the shadows and this side will darken the highlights. But now just like in curves you can come up here and select the color you want to affect independently. Which I will go to blue and add just a bit of blue into the shadows. I often do this since it adds a pretty nice filmic look. But now I'm going to add hue and saturation which I will pull my saturation up just a little bit. Then I'm going to add another instance of curves. This time I'm going to add a bit more blue into the shadows and I will continue stylizing a bit further to the look I want. Then bringing in another instance of levels to push the contrast even further. Now the thing to keep in mind like we talked about last week, each effect is adjusted the image after the correction that came before it so it does matter what order you put these in and the main thing here is to know what the tools do and what can be done with them not exactly what I'm doing button for button there's really no one way to grade a shot it's all about what you're looking for and what you want to convey to your audience but now let's go ahead and move back I like the color that I'm getting here but I do want to dial back the saturation to do that this time I'm gonna add tint to my image and this will take it to black and white and then I can subtract that until I get the look I want and there we have a basic grade. Here's the before and here is the after. Now again, I'm not showing you an in-depth of how to get this exact look because even if you use the exact parameters I used on every single button, your shot would look completely different. You have to cater your grading to your specific shot since every shot is different with the lighting and the color that you had within your camera. But here, my aim was to add a sense of harshness while still staying a bit bright in my image. I also took my shadows to a bluish area by pushing reds and yellows into my highlights and mids. This is something I do often with my shots to get sort of just a generic filmic look but I'm not done there are a few other touches to add to this to stylize it even further but after this if you're setting up a website to start a business or blog, Domain.com is the place to go for your next great idea. Domain.com makes it easy to set up a domain name or get your website up and running. You can blog, create a website, showcase a portfolio, make that moolah. There is tons that you can do over there. And the guys over there want to hook you up with 15% off your domain name and web hosting when you use the coupon code FILMRIOT when you're checking out at Domain.com. Because when you use the FILMRIOT code... You get 50% off when you check it out at Domain.com just to drive that home. Do you think that drove that home? I don't think so. No? I mean, you already kind of said it. So it was a little redundant? A little bit. I was just trying to, you know. Yeah. When you think domain names, think of Domain.com. Logo. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to cheat a bit by using a third-party plugin. 
I know. But you could do this with solids and blending modes as well, but I think it looks a lot better using optical flares from Video Copilot. So to show you what I'm talking about, I'll add a solid, then apply optical flares, grab a sun looking flare, take everything off with the glowing orb by hiding them and then click OK. Now I will change the blending mode to screen, change its color to a bit more of an orangish, and then move it just outside of the right side of the frame. Now I will duplicate the solid layer, move the new flare to the opposite side and change its color to more of a blue which we now have these two nice contrasting colors, but they have completely washed out our scene. So I will add another adjustment layer, add levels to it and bring my contrast back in. But now I think the saturation is a bit much. So I will add tint again and then pull that down until I have something I'm happy with. So now we have our shot looking a lot more interesting and stylish with just that one easy step. Something like this is great for music videos or even your film if you use it a bit more subtly. With most things, an aggressive grade like this could get a bit distracting but there is one more thing that I want to add which I pretty much almost always add to my grades and that is a vignette so I'll add a black solid create a mask around my actor and feather like crazy now I will change the blending mode to soft light and drop the opacity to 50% this is a really great and subtle technique to draw the eye of your audience right to where you want it here it is without and now with Josh stands out way more with the vignette than he does without it. Now you could use it a lot more harsh if you want. I like to make it very subtle to where you almost don't even know it's there until you toggle it on and off. But now with everything added, here you have the before and now after all our gradings. So there you go, a basic idea of what you can do to stylize your image. Now again, it's not about every button that I push. It's about understanding the tools that you have and what those tools do so you can create your own look for your film. But those are the basic ideas to get you started in getting a creative grade. And you don't need the top end software either. As you can see, you could basically do it with whatever tools that you have available to you. Just know what your tools do and you can grade something to look a beautiful. But that's it for today. We will be discussing color manipulation a bit more. We aren't done just yet, but until we do, you can follow me here on Twitter if you do feel so inclined. And I'll see you guys next week when no one believes my giant invisible bunny friend is real. Donnie Darko? No. <phone rings> Yellow. Is this line secure? What's up, Emily? Is this line secure? Yes, it is. No, be too safe. Turn on the signal jammer. No one's listening. Turn it on, man! Okay, hold on. Click. Okay, it's on. Where are you? I'm at home. I'm here. It's burnt to the ground still. Emily, I'm in Texas. Joshua. And Bruno. And Bruno. How could you fall for that? All the cars are in the driveway. You're right. Never trust a note. Espionage 101. Dinky! It happens. Are you coming back? Of course. I'm coming back for Josh and Bruno. You tell him I'm coming, Ryan. You tell him I'm coming. And Vengeance is my co-pilot. You hear me? Vengeance is my co-pilot! Okay, I'll tell him. Can you pick me up a slushie on your way back? No, yeah, no problem. A slushie and Vengeance are my co-pilots! Okay, a cherry slushie. Okay, see you in a few days. Okay, see you.